You're listening to the Greening Out Podcast. This show contains profanity, hate for the state, and themes of a libertarian nature. If you are easily offended, please listen to something else. For more, visit greeningoutpodcast.co.uk. Hi, I'm Katie Green. Hi, I'm Dan Green. Welcome back to the Greening Out Podcast. Welcome back to the Greening Out Podcast. Yes. So let's just jump straight in because we're a bit awkward at the beginning. Yes. Yeah, so, well, here's here's the let's start with the libertarian portion of the podcast. Nice. Okay. So go. <laughs> go. So we we'll start by, we'll start by bashing communism, shall we? It's always a good place to start. Yeah. Well, we were watching um, documentary. Yes. Yes. An incredibly good documentary. Um, it's called The Lost World of Communism. It's actually a three part series that was on. The, um, it was done by BBC actually. Mm. Two thousand and nine. Yeah, and it kind of looks at like the legacy that communism's left behind, um, twenty years on from obviously the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, just to see, and it's quite bleak. I mean, we were looking at kind of East East, what, East Germany. East Germany, yeah, was the episode we watched, um, and it really wow. was. It was it was really interesting the kind quite, of things that came quite up. Harrowing actually, at some, but it's like, and I don't use that word very lightly. Mm, you know I know what, what you mean. mean. What was weird and what really actually stood out for me was that there was quite a few people in that documentary who wanted to go back to East Germany yeah. or the ones that didn't want to go exactly back to it, there's certain parts of it that they missed. And I noticed the things that come up a lot of the time, it's like, well, you know, it was, there's it was like, the security, wasn't it? Well, that's what it was. Yeah. It was like, I'll be permanent, I'll be like permanent employment. You never had to worry about a job. Yeah. And there was that woman, wasn't it? And she there's, was talking about childcare and stuff. There's, there's one woman that said it was nice to know. It was, I'm paraphrasing. Of course, I don't remember it exactly, but she said mm-hmm. something like, it was nice to know that even if I ended up as a single mother living in a little dingy flat, I could at least have heating. She yeah. said it was nice to have that sort of. Oh yes, yeah, she still have electricity, and she wouldn't need to worry she about the need bills to and stuff like as much, that. That's what she know? was saying, yeah, and like yeah. she but felt that the words the words she used were even if I became a single. Mm-hmm. mother mm-hmm. living in a horrible flat mm-hmm. i wouldn't have to worry about mm-hmm. having to get you know heating mm-hmm. and things like that and i just i thought well what odd what an odd thing to to jump to i know what you mean um, i've never thought about that you know with you and i i mean I, I, we but, do but live in she... a socialist country <laughs> but i rather never, socialist well rather socialist you know yeah we're not we going to, we're not going to claim that we live in, ah, uh, but like, you we're know. We're not living under communism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it is socialist and we do have, you know, a welfare system. Yeah, we, I would say this, I, we have massive socialist so, elements like the National Health Service. Actually, and if I ended up, and stuff. if I, d- if I did end up a single mother in a horrible flat, yeah, I wouldn't have to worry about heating. But, you know, if. <laughs> But, but you know this It's thing, just an odd place to go to. It's an odd thing to miss. I know miss what you mean. And there was that also, kind of feeling, I don't know. There was like that woman who was like, a, she was in like a musical and stuff like that. Her yeah. husband was like what they called like the Cliff Richard of East Germany. Who, by the way, that guy, he was a singer and he was told by the party what songs well, to what sing. What to sing, yeah. But when they interviewed this woman that was his wife, that he was in mm. this sort of, this version of West Side Story, this East, yeah. East German version. Yeah. She was, she was one of the people that wanted, that was talking about how great East Germany was. And she was saying like, oh, and the West now singers are commodities, but they weren't in East Germany. Yeah. You know, but now they are. And she thinks that the arts and that were, were taking much better, you know, there was much more sort of care given to them in East yeah. Germany. But I don't know about the art that came out of it. They all looked a bit, <laughs> some of it looked a bit shit. It was, it was bleak, but it was, it was quite real. And yeah. what was coming out of there. But you know, it had like, it was showed you like their version of the swinging sixties. And you know, for lack yeah. of any other term, it could only be described as naff or, you know, yeah. square. A yeah. Bit, a bit, yeah. It was, you know, but, but they, but and they were the, taught that like capitalism was evil. That yeah. was evil. You weren't, you know. Ah, like they were taught actually that in school, yeah, like yeah. that. When we were saying they were actually, uh, that's just, it's, it's like the indoctrination was so deep because even their kids' cartoon yeah. character, the Sandman, was basically that was just, a, it was yeah. just a propaganda arm. Uh-huh. You know, like, but to get into kids' minds. Uh-huh. It was really just, was that was much, bizarre. Was, um, I, I rec, I highly recommend to anybody to watch this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, immediately. They'll, they'll <laughs> it's on, um, we're going to link up at the bottom. Yeah. It's on YouTube. 
But the the thing that seemed kind of fun was like when it showed you the punk movement, and apparently yeah. they were really really concerned about the punk movement. And then there was those two guys that were like in a band. Yep. And the guy that played the bass was informant for the Stasi for the on Stasi. the lead singer. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it was like one, friends, one in six people they said were yeah. Stasi informants at one point. But they were getting people basically to yeah to grasp people up as a big nanny state. You but know, it was like everybody huge. was being watched all the time, and they remember uh, there was a part where they took private like videos of their yeah yeah of the of of just normal people in their homes. Uh, here we go, right? I've got some some <laughs> some Wikipedia ah, type some notes on the Stasi. And if anyone doesn't know, I'm sure most people do. But the Stasi were the secret police in East Germany. Okay, so the Stasi infiltrated almost every aspect of life. In the mid-1980s, a network of IMs, like informants, began growing in both German states. By the time East Germany collapsed in 1989, the Stasi employed 91,015 employees and (laughs) 173,081 informants. About one of every every 63 East Germans collaborated with the Stasi. By one estimate, the Stasi maintained a greater surveillance over its own people than any secret police force in history. The Stasi employed one full-time agent for every 166 East Germans. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's just unbelievable, man. That's insane. But then, like, here's here's a point to bring in then. If uh-huh. you're saying that's crazy and that's insane. Well. It, it's, like, they did do things, like you said, they actually, like, film people in their houses, yeah. people having sex and stuff like that know, and all gross. sorts. Apparently. But, like... What they also what what's weird is how much are we being bugged just now though? Well, yeah, I mean Britain is um definitely one of the I think one of the biggest places for like CCTV and surveillance and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And I mean even our, through our streets, like yeah. you know like even through like your smartphones and stuff can be like hacked into oh, yeah. and listened to and stuff like that, and then yeah. your computer they can turn on your webcam and stuff like that. Oh, of course. So it they makes can. you think. I mean. With the Stasi, if the, if you, I mean, were the guys, if the guys that were in the Stasi are still alive. It wasn't that yeah. long ago, right? Are they now looking at like GCHQ and the NSA and going, my God, this is brilliant. They, they, <laughs> they've dressed it up like it's there for people's protection. But like, that's what I think. I mean, I think I heard it actually on the Freedom Fiends. It was, it was on the Freedom Fiends. Yeah. They were talking about how what Richard Nixon got impeached when he like, you know, bugged a hotel. Yeah. But like George W. Bush and Barack Obama have bugged the entirety of the US and nobody yeah. seems to care. No, I know. But that's because... <laughs> that wasn't the Freedom Fiends. Yeah, it was. I remember. I remember that. No, it was just... And, you know, you and I have talked about this. That kind of reminds me of the false flag kind of thing. It's okay mm-hmm. because of... I don't know, throw it out there. It's okay because of 9-11. You know, it was okay <laughs> to do all that stuff uh, yeah, after cause, it. Because you might be a terrorist now. You so might be like, a terrorist. I'm just using it as an example. Over here, we obviously had the 7-7 bombings. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the papers now, in the British papers, about um, terrorism. Scotland's apparently a big big target right now for terrorist activity. No, I have. <laughs> I've had, I know, I've read it in the paper and I keep, I go, why, really? I read it in the paper. What paper? I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> no, I, I read, I read I, that. I you tell know, you, I had a paper. I read that free one on the bus. Ah, right, okay. The Metro. Yeah. That's yeah. a cool paper. Yeah, it's a good paper. <laughs> it's it's free not on the really. bus. It's, it's free, course, though. They wouldn't it's free. put it free on the bus if it wasn't good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it wasn't great, you know, they wouldn't give it out to everybody. And they actually encourage you to take it with you. Yeah. I, they do. They go, please don't leave me on the bus. It's like uh, a little paper the cartoon. Are, the bus is a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> right, enough about the bus. Right, right, sorry, bus tangents. Yeah, so you were talking about, um, yeah, you were talking about Scotland. Yeah, Scotland thousand. apparently is a big terror threat, um, but right now in is, Scotland. It just seems like this nonsense, doesn't it? Yeah, that it they does. always hit you with, you know, and it's like, I mean, who's buying all this crap? <laughs> I mean, well, remember I told you, like, the other day, the two main papers, uh, the, the free, the free bus paper, the, the free metro, bus paper. and the daily. Other papers are available, the, but not free on the bus unless somebody leaves them. <laughs> unless somebody leaves them, and, and in fact, and free on the in, bus. On, in that case, they are fair game. That's they true. are anybody's. Mm. We're, we're back to papers. I'm just saying again. that's good bus paper etiquette. Okay. Anyway, two two papers, the Daily Record and the Metro. I'll need to find them. They they, they linked up to this story about a young man. Uh, apparently autistic boy uh, with an air rifle is going around a small English town. I'll find it and I will link it up. Um, and I found it really strange that they were putting this on the front of two papers when there's, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. And yeah. this was an old story from like September. Yeah, it doesn't seem like 
Yeah, that's weird. It was really weird. And um, basically the the gist of both our articles that covered it was the boy had an air rifle. They weren't very, the police weren't sure if it was a real gun. Um, they had a big uh, back, back and forth with the boy. And if it weren't, and I'm paraphrasing here, if it weren't for the bravery of those officers, it would have what led. Said? Yeah, if it weren't for the bravery it's of the officers. It's important to say that's not what you're saying. That's, that's not what, what I'm saying. Said. That's what the paper said. If it weren't for, you know, the, um, the, Bravery. If it weren't for the bravery yeah. of those of those officers, then it would have ended in the young man uh, being shot to death. Crazy. Yeah. But that's, that's just madness. But if I could drag us kicking and screaming back to East Germany. <laughs> you can drag us kicking and screaming back to East Germany and I'll come back to that point later no, just about, about to, that story. To say, well, I just think it's a good um, it's a good propaganda piece on how good the police are in times where um, culturally at the moment we're being uh, told that the police are not good. Well, you yeah, know? you mean like there's a lot of stuff coming out of America, like these big the Eric protests Garner and stuff like and that. that yeah. The I Can't Breathe the stuff and, and all that. after Mike, Michael Brown and Ferguson. Exactly. It's yeah, just, I, it, um, it's, there's a lot of police hate all over the world right now. And I just found it funny that two uh, papers would run an old story that yeah. really made the police look fantastic. Yeah, you'd have to ask yourself So it was questions. interesting. I just was asking myself why when I hadn't heard about it and it happened in September. So I'll link that all up at the show notes, but let's, let, let's yeah. go hopping and skipping <laughs> back to East Germany, back to the wonderful land of communism. <laughs> well, that's the thing. See, because. What the point I wanted to make was, you know, the guy like was saying like, oh, well, you would never have to worry about unemployment and stuff in East Germany, you know, and that kind of thing. Paradise. Yeah, but see, that's the problem, right? I would rather have the threat of unemployment and financial ruin hanging over my head. Than be put in jail for things I've said or something like that. Yeah, and have the freedom to conduct my life in a way I want to, you know, and not just be basically a slave to the state, you know what I mean? And without people informing on me you know and all freedom's that. incredibly important and i think when you talk to people about freedom it's interesting people's um interpretations of that of that word oh yeah some people have very narrow interpretations uh, i was talking completely. to a family member some recently. people think it's what they're allowed to do yeah exactly <laughs> and um what my master lets me do what the what this this family member said to me was it's um freedom is what you're allowed to do <laughs> oh, man, and I was crazy. just, and but they were saying it in a sincere way of, well, I of course I'm free. I'm allowed to do so many things. Yeah, and what about all the things you're not allowed, you're not allowed to, allowed to do? do? Like exactly. if you don't have, you don't have a little plastic piece of some card. You have, you can't travel to another country. Yeah, you need a they permission stop. slip. You need a permission you need a slip. Permission slip. Right, from the we're bus. going off on tangents upon tangents. No, we're upon not. Tangents. We're, we're, right. we're, 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 we're sticking with it. Because sorry, the, I was the, going on a tangent in my head. Yeah, no, that's because that's the thing. Because. I would rather the uncertainty and, and have the freedom. Like, yeah. But it seems to me that, and I've always thought this, and I'm not the first person to say it, and I definitely won't be the last, but no. I think the state infantilizes people so much. And like these people that were saying, like that woman that was talking about childcare and stuff like that, that really liked East Germany, what she was saying was basically like, I felt taken care of. And that's what she did yeah. say. You know, I felt taken care of. That was, in is, fact, that was a word. It is a I, nice feeling, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing, and it's like, it's almost like the state is filling a role as like a pedant. Yeah. You know, it's like a kind of benevolent father figure. But mm-hmm. then that's not the case if you look at it, because it's yeah. so violent and brutal. I know. But, and, and but what I mean, if, the... if you don't want to do anything for yourself, it's great. Uh-huh. But I don't want the restrictions, you know... Uh, I mean, if you want, it's like we talked to Walter Block. If you're playing the Greening Out Drinking oh. Game, you're going to give a shot. Um, remember, he was he was basically saying that you know. Not against socialism, you know, because if a bunch of people want to go and buy a land or a big commune somewhere or something and, mm-hmm. you know, live as socialists together, then yeah. fine. The problem is the coercion because once these socialists get into power, they make everyone else like us who want nothing to do with it, mm-hmm. they make us go along with it. Yeah. One of the interesting things while we're talking about the, the um, communism in East Germany, one of the aspects was the childcare. Mm-hmm. And the, the mm-hmm. free childcare that was like yeah. this. One of the modern day parallels that we could probably draw from that is um, the SNP, the uh, Scottish National Party. The Scottish National Party. Um, there was a recently a story about. I think we did link up on our news page. Mm-hmm. Under, yeah. of, if a teacher finds out about underage sex of a pupil, um, they are now being encouraged or told. I'm not really sure. Are they told or? 
encouraged to tell the guardian, the state guardian, yeah. be before the child's parents. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's horrifying to me. Yeah, because they what is this thing where they have like a state guardian for every child. So your child would be allocated a social services person, pretty much. I mean, there's some Even people. If are, there's some people don't... that are not a lot of people are up in arms about this, and I'm quite surprised about that. I mean, the the people that seem to be up in arms about it mostly are like the Christians, actually. You know, yeah. from what I've noticed, a lot of Christian groups aren't happy because uh, I think their main argument, as I understand it, and forgive me if I'm wrong, is basically yeah. that it undermines the sort of the family. Yeah, which I it think does. family values are incredibly important. I think that's been kind of lost a little bit. I mean, it's creepy. You know, yeah, I mean, uh -huh. like here's your child's state representative. That's, that's awful. That's creepy. That sounds dystopian to me. I don't, again, though, it's hard for, for me anyway to talk about parenting and stuff because I don't have kids. So it's always a difficult one for yeah, me. Yeah, but because, this isn't like an expediential thing because uh -huh. it's just. I coming, just think yeah. it's wrong to um, have a state guardian be informed of something so personal. It sounds, for, it sounds be, very socialist, doesn't uh -huh. it? And very. Ugh, yeah. Makes me feel all dirty. I don't like it. <laughs> it's very. It's almost. Do you feel very, like someone's pouring red paint all over me? Ugh. <laughs> um, no, it, just, it makes me feel sort of uneasy, like like kind of a futuristic dystopian place where nobody has parents. We're mm. all just a collective and That's we're all scary, just man. kind of. Ugh. I but don't then really that goes go back to Plato in the Republic. He was yeah. suggesting that children should be brought up by the state. So that's like quite an old idea, actually, if you think it about is it actually, in that way. Yeah, I never, I didn't actually think about that. But you know how, like, see, we were talking about this, just like, um, take us over here a little bit, because see, because we were okay, talking about how go. there's some people that want to go back to the East Germany. Yes. I was shocked to find out that the, there is a communist party in Russia, right? And not only is there a communist, they're called the they communist party learn. of the Russian Federation, right? Oh my. But here's the thing, they're the second largest party in Russia. See, like, that, that does shock me. You know, that and after and everything that's happened. Of them, and it's not all young people, man. Mm -hmm. There's like older people who yeah. would have remembered. Aye. Who I actually mean, should have learned their lessons. And really. see if you look in the Wikipedia page, you yeah. can see them like taking wreaths and flowers to Stalin's tomb. Yeah. I mean, the guy is a mass murderer. I know. They'd probably tell me that's a conspiracy theory, I think. They would. I don't know, maybe they, they would. would call you a liar and I mean, a capitalist. But then, I'm a capitalist. <laughs> so am I. I. I bought something See, today, took, so there you they go. took the liar part out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, do you know what, right? So, they're the second biggest party, right? The Communist Party of the Russian Federation, right? And mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Russian politics, right? Yeah. It's not my, my thing, but yeah. what did surprise me is we'll just, we'll just mention this. Mm -hmm. The Communist Party of the Russian Federation today is, this is from their website. Yeah. 160,000 members, 81 regional party branches, 14,000 primary party organizations. Yeah. You know, they've that's got seats neat. in like the Duma and stuff like that. It's so like the parliament, which is, mm. I find it surprising. Yes. You know, but then like, I thought, well, let's look at United Russia. They're the biggest yeah. party, right? And they're like, you know, the party of like Putin and Medvedev and all these sort of guys, right? Yeah. And then this, I was, this was interesting. This actually. surprised me. I did not know that, right? I do, I'm totally ignorant of Russian politics, right? Like right. completely. But it said the. This is off the Wikipedia page. It says the United Russia Party has no coherent ideology, <laughs> but embraces politicians and officials with a variety of political views who support the administration. It appeals mainly to non-ideological vo voters. Therefore, United Russia is often classified as a catch-all party or a party of power. See, that's, that's weird. But that's, that's genius. I've never heard it but is. that is genius. Yeah. See, if you're wanting to really, I'm sorry, if if you are, if you want to have ultimate control, mm. that is genius. <laughs> right. You do not have to appeal to one type of person That's then. Not, yeah, I suppose. You yeah. can make it, this is for everybody. Yeah. All this right. is for you, this is, is for yeah, you. Yeah. Well, that is genius, man. Yeah. Dude knows what he's doing, that's all I'll say. <laughs> anyway. No, but that is, that is interesting. So I don't know anything about Russian politics, but like, oh. like I said, so you've got these people that want to go back to East Germany, how it was, and then yeah. you've got a communist party being the, you know, the second largest party in Russia. Now yeah. I'm not going to turn around and go, well, this, this communism must work after all. I've been yeah. proven wrong. <laughs> no, I don't think that at all. I, I do think it's, I mean, I don't know how everyone thinks, obviously, but yeah. to me, the arguments I hear, a lot of it sounds just like I said, like, 
they feel quite infantilized. Uh, yeah. Well, they are quite infantilized, and they view the state as like a sort of big brother or but a that benevolent isn't father easier. figure. I mean, surely you you understand and accept mm. that that isn't that is an easier way to live. Of course, I would say for anybody, well, if you for, didn't like, if you didn't have to worry about anything, mm, I'm just saying. Yeah, I, for most people, that would yeah. be a really easy thing to do. Mm. And even in some of my my, my darker days, perhaps <laughs> perhaps I would have liked to, you know. To be taken care of a bit, um, by but it's not it's not good in the long run. Well, no, it's not and a society certainly can't function like that. That's no. what I mean. Within a small community of people, you could get together and rally around people that are having a tough time with things. Yeah, and I mean, I don't, I don't mind people. But it that, doesn't have see to be that, coercive. And, right, see if people want this. Is the thing if if some people genuinely would say, "I'll give up a lot of my freedom." To be taken care of. Yeah. Right, that's fine if that's how they think, right? But the problem is they when think it's they when it's done free. when it's done like a, a, through a, with a massive state, which it is yeah. like. What happens is then everyone gets dragged into that, so that's when supporting that becomes wrong. I mean, that's okay if mm-hmm. that's just your personal preference, but then when you support like me or anyone else yeah. who doesn't want to be involved in it, you know, getting coerced and forced to get involved in it and See, forced to play by their rules. Obviously, that's not it's on them. the people who have a, a lovely view of how East Germany was obviously have a lovely memory of it. Yeah, they weren't like the ones that they were getting hauled off into camps for escaping were, or anything uh-huh, like they that. They were yeah. obviously, <laughs> you know, the ones that were accepted as being allowed. Mm-hmm. And you'll be okay, you won't question it, just on you go and you go. But then when you get somebody that comes along and says, well, I don't really think what you're doing is very good, actually. I would like to have the freedom to be able to say I hate X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. without fear of going to jail. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there was a, a young woman, um, well, she's not young anymore. She's pretty old, actually, in the documentary, <laughs> but she had drawn a little, um, bow with lipstick on, like on a, a picture of Stalin, of Stalin. And she was sentenced to 10 years? In a concentration camp. Yeah. It's just and they did, also, they did drills, um, as well in that camp, apparently. Um, and they were like, I'm going to do, we're going to do to you, um, what they did to the Jews, remember? Yeah, was that the Soviet trips? I yeah, think it was. Yeah, I that think was, it was awful, remember? Said. I and don't she exactly said, know what they mean by that, but like... No, they were in a, like, a shower. All oh, right, they were... So oh, they were there saying, oh, okay, we're, okay, we're going to gas you. I see where you're coming from. But they never did. It was water that came out of the That was like pipes. psychological torture. Psychological to them. torture, uh, yeah. Were, yeah aye. And that was like the Soviets, yeah. uh, wasn't it? How yeah, sick is that? That's twisted, man. Yeah, it was pretty sick, man. Like... Even, I mean, see, when they're tell when they're saying, the propaganda saying this is such a great country. I yeah. mean, see a country that imprisons people for trying to leave. I mean, you know something's Can't be that not good. on there. Um, you know, yeah. Do you know, that just worries me. I mean. <laughs> That's an incredibly good point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like, if people want to get out and then, you know, you must stay here. You know, like, can't be doing is that not good job. You know, alarm bells kind of go off <laughs> in your head. Really should have been. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, even hang, uh, sorry, paragliders were illegal that in case you used them to escape. Yeah. I mean, that came up, which was really weird. That was bizarre. I mean, I've just never, oh, I've just never heard of any of this stuff. I mean, I understand, like, see, when you hear some socialists, uh, or some mm. communists, pretty much, let's just stick with communists just now mm. as the term. Yeah. And they talk about, like, oh, like, they're so materialistic and, you know, the West is so materialistic and ridiculous. Hmm. It is, right? It is completely yeah. materialistic and it is, you know, it's a bit mental, right? But that's but, materialism, surely. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't think that you should suddenly <laughs> lock down and ban people from doing stuff. I mean, yeah. I don't like 90% of what's on television. I think it's idiotic garbage, right? right? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest the answer to that is for me to get in power and then <laughs> ban all that television and only put on the television that I think people should watch because I don't think that's the answer. That's I think insane. it's stupid. But the fact is, does that harm me in any way? No. I mean, it might harm my ears when I hear bad manufactured pop music, you know what I mean? Awful. Or it might, you know, harm my sense of creativity when I see some of this crap that's on television. But the fact of the matter is, it's it's not actual harm. There's no, they're not aggressing against me. It's not doing me any yeah. harm. So let people do what they want as I long know. as it doesn't bother you, man. Just let them have their crap. But that's why this whole thing about um, the society and, and family, it's harming that, that they, look, they, they do that a lot. Yeah, and it's, do you know what the thing is as well? Harming. It's like, I was listening to an Alan Watts um lecture recently yeah, and he was yeah. saying only a maniac you know would want to have control and he was using like the u.s president yeah. as like an idea you know like because he was talking well 
as a sort of example, because he was talking about how, like, for example, the president has to wee people all around him. You know, he can't just go for a walk in the park when he feels like it or yeah. duck out and see a film or something like that. You know, and he was talking about how the president, bizarrely, has got no freedom at all. It's hilarious. And we were talking even that led us to talking about... Um, I actually think Alan Watts said, a- what a pop for this man is, or something was like that. Was that your Alan Watts impression? <laughs> it was, it was good, wasn't it? It was... Main, no. It was mind boggling. <laughs> no, but that we, that, that led us to talking about, yeah, the, the, the president of the United States or any kind of politician really uh, who's high up, you know, um, running a country or something like that, you know, um, cannot go out without bodyguards. Their freedom is hindered. Yeah, that's not by this weird, by it? this rule. But like, why? I mean, why but would you that, want that? That made us talk about celebrity mm. and this idea yeah. that these things where these people get ridiculous money they have no freedom they, yeah because i heard and i believe it was uh, jack white um from yeah. the white stripes doing an interview and he was saying that like sometimes he wishes like he wasn't famous because he can't go to concerts like now with yeah. just stand about without getting like mobbed by loads of people because if you're at that ridiculous level of celebrity i mean your freedom's gone man if you're yeah. at the point where there's people like harassing you everywhere you go you can't just you know Nick out looking like a mess and go for a walk with a dog in the park, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because then you're going to be splashed all over all these papers. That'd be it's awful, cool. wouldn't it? Fuck that, man. I, me and you have talked and was like, what would you be famous for any amount of money? And I don't think that I mean, level of... I mean, I think it would be alright if like once a month, you know, some, some <laughs> guy in like a weird bookshop or like something comes up to you and goes, oh yeah, aren't you? Yeah. And then that's it. Like, you know, that would be alright. But see if like people are harassing you just going out the house. I like being anonymous when I walk yeah. out of the house and I like that people apart from the government don't follow me. The <laughs> Technically the government are in my pocket inside my phone. They live I don't, in I don't, your be- phone. I don't believe they live in the phone or anything, but you know, I believe they can get to me through it. <laughs> No. I'm sounding really paranoid now. The government live in my phone. I take 43 different routes to work. <laughs> you, need to, you need to take off your tinfoil hat. No, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you, just, you think you're far more important okay. than it's we off. actually are. Um, I would hope. See, if I found out the government didn't have anything better to do than follow me about, I, I would, would be, be horrified. Yeah, yeah, I would be horrified if anybody was interested at all in what, <laughs> anything I said for any amount of time. No, on the subject of fame, yeah, I usually, I feel kind of bad for people sometimes when I see it, you know. No wonder, I mean, they like... They get absolutely hounded. Well, here's the thing as well, do you know, like, you see in some of those magazines, and it's like, they zoom in on, like, it's like, in, they're in Hollywood or something, it's some celebrity, and they zoom in on their armpits. Yeah. And then they they're like... Sweat. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, look, this person sweats, isn't that disgusting? Well, yeah. don't you? Doesn't everyone else? I mean, I just, I never understood that. Do you remember when I used to buy a magazine every day? Yeah, I used I to buy a magazine every yeah, single yeah. day. And it's like, it's almost like, it's like a daily punishment. It's like, hey, read this and feel bad about yourself. There you go, read this. <laughs> You'll never be pretty enough. Boom. <laughs> they I just, that's you set up for the day. Yeah, no, exactly. It's pretty horrifying, but uh, yeah. this is a, this is a very, very self-indulgent tangent we seem to have taken. <laughs> uh, no, I feel but bad. It's self-indulgent. For... The whole show is self-indulgent because we're talking about whatever we want this to talk really about. This really is, actually. This is the ultimate form of self-indulgence. That's it, Katie, just quit. <laughs> I'm quitting the show. I'm leaving. No, I'm going to stop feeding myself. It's terribly self-indulgent. <laughs> Try to keep myself yeah, alive. Yeah, because I have to podcast to live. <laughs> we'll podcast for food. I was just taking that further to its logical conclusion. To its logical conclusion. But here's the other thing right now. Again, we were talking about like how that Communist Party of the Russian Federation yeah, are yeah. like the second biggest party in Russia. Unbelievably, yes. And again, and this is what you hear all the time, and it says, the party status on the Wikipedia page, the yeah. party's stated goal is to establish a new, modernised form of socialism in Russia. And it's isn't it always that, though? Yeah. But isn't it always like, see, every it, time it fails and it falls on its arse, which we're central do planning a new way. generally does, you yeah. know. And I don't know these people, actually. I don't know a lot about what their plan is. They might have a good plan. I don't know. Yeah. Right? I haven't read it. Right? All I'm just saying well, is, you hear a lot of this, all this reinventing socialism, and it seems that yeah. that goes on and on and on. It's like I've been hearing a lot. Um, Nicola Sturgeon is the the first minister of Scotland now, mm-hmm. and she's harping the dear on leader. yes, dear, <laughs> dear leader, and she's harping on about um, powers for women and stuff, which I, ugh, she, she really does my head in. Um, not that you're against women. Oh, for, no, of course I'm not. <laughs> but I mean, like, yeah, she just I just think that you could no, but like clear, she's you know. saying that she's going to um, be fair and just, and she's going to really improve it and I just I just can't help but think 
are people really buying this? Is, is, yeah, are really. people really eating this up? Because she was boozing buddies with Alex Salmon for a long time. And they did, you know. Well, of course, she's his number two. Uh huh. Yeah. So, for you years? know, she'd been keeping all these ideas to herself. <laughs> <laughs> she'd oh, been yeah, keeping like, a little book. He was, little... He, he was like, yeah, you save that one to when you're first. You minister. save that one for when you're in power, ne- is, Nicola. Yeah, this is, this is Alex Dame. <laughs> this is, a, ooh, that was horrifying. I'm not suggesting he talks like that. No, he kind of does. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about the man, to be fair. Nah. Um, we're not going to, we're not going to. He's trying to get into ourselves. politics again, though. Yeah, Westminster. I believe as an MP, <laughs> and then oh, I what's think, wrong with him? I, I know it's weird, isn't it? Why? Why would he do that? It's I just don't bizarre. Know. He needs a job. Man needs. To, man's got to eat. <laughs> got to respect it. He can't sign on. He wouldn't want to sign on. <laughs> he's probably got enough money to do him. I know. I suppose he's got enough to get by, doesn't he? But right, okay, enough. should we before, maybe take a nice light and I, a sued, <laughs> Maybe we should take a nice uplifting turn to something. I think we should something enjoyable and light. <laughs> later than later than East Germany. So or, if we if we could just be light now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, here's the thing. Right. Me and you both have like ear gauging. You know, we've both yes. got the sort of holes in our ears. Yeah, we you do. Know, yeah. And we've both got quite a lot of tattoos. Like yep. you have a, a lot on your arms. You've got yeah, like a big yeah. chest one, mm-hmm. and mine is like a full sleeve. I've got a full sleeve in my right arm and like ones in my left arm and back and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now everyone I'm aware knows. Of, right? I'm aware of what our <laughs> of what our bodies look like. Thank you. Right. So we're yeah. all aware of that now. Yes. I'm sick of older people coming up to me and going, oh, you kids with your tattoos and your holes in your ears and, you know, I this kind of thing. I used to know that. And then you uh, try and explain. You go, hold on a minute, right? It's because very old. I actually thought I'd look this up. Yeah, because if anything, they're just not carrying on a tradition, right? Because yep. we'll go back to Wikipedia because we're not going to kid on that we put more effort in than that. <laughs> no, you should do your own work. I'm just telling you what I found and now it's your job to go and see if that's right or not. But yeah, so according to Wikipedia, and they've got... Um, they claim that tattooing was popular among ethnic groups in southern China, Polynesia, mm-hmm. Africa, Borneo, Cambodia, Europe, Japan, the Mentawai Islands, Ooh. Mesoamerica, New Zealand, North America, and South America, the Philippines, Iron Age, Britain, and Taiwan. Yep. Now, so it's not exactly a a new hipster thing. Oh, well, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's an old tradition. For example, this is what I didn't know, right? The... First documented professional tattoo artist in the US, mm-hmm. he arrived in Boston in 1846. Yep. And then in Britain, um, it was in the port of Liverpool in the 1870s yeah. with the first tattoo artist, yeah. which is quite, it goes back. Well, obviously then it was associated with sailors and stuff. But like, see, if we look at all that, then it's just a, it's a much larger, older tradition. Uh-huh. And all, all we're doing, it's the same with ear gauging because see oh, yeah. if we look at this as well. Um, again, Wikipedia, man. You know I mean? It's great. We're going to link everything up, obviously. So they say, like, you know, like different cultures with ear gauging, you yeah. know, like, and if you don't know, that's when you stretch your ears so you've got little holes in them. Yeah. You can, right. So King, they, yeah. King Tutankhamun stretched ear lobes, uh-huh. the Egyptian pharaoh, the Iceman, um, this were mummified bodies with stretched ear lobes um, that were discovered, including the oldest mummified body to be discovered called Otzi the Iceman. Oh, really? The Iceman was found in the Alps between Austria and Italy. Wow. This European mummy had a stretch of somewhere between 7 to 11 mil in diameter so oh. again the Gautama Buddha as in yeah. you know the Buddha um, the Buddha yep uh, I mean we even have uh, a Buddha statue we've got more than one where he's, he's got stretched ears yeah, yeah. We do, actually. ancient Greek sculptures Easter Island heads Mercy tribal women uh, Maasai people of Kenya Mexican so, civilizations Asian again, hill tribes it goes on and on again and on. this is not something that originated uh, you know in the in the western world in the in I, the late 2000s, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. People have been doing I mean, this for so long. And people, even, people were even doing like it in punk. Europe. That shows that people were doing it in Europe well, a long, like, long time ago. Even like, this is a big thing about punk rock. You know, mm-hmm. the DIY kind of home done punk rock tattoos. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you've got you've got a few. Yeah, so do you. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, but no, it's... it's uh, I, I agree with you, Dan, in the fact that a lot of people, especially people of the older generation, do say to me more often than not, will you not regret that when you're older? And I just thought it's such a bizarre concept to me. <laughs> Worrying about something that... Uh, that might never happen. Like... My generation of older people is going to be filled with tattooed people. <laughs> really I'm not is. going to be the only one. 
I know, and like, but isn't that the old joke that you hear all the time? And it's like someone asks, like, hey, old guy, I see young guy, is that, oh, those tattoos, what will you do when you're old? And he said, you know, I won't look like every other old bastard. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, Dan, you and I will look like every other old, old bastard. bastard. Yeah, that, uh, that is good. I don't that, care, uh, though, you know, I, I like getting it done. And the great thing about tattoos are they literally, every tattoo I have, I remember when I got it done. Yeah. And right. it was always a fun day. You know, <laughs> we tended to have fun when we were yeah, getting tattoos. Yeah, we did. The majority of my tattoos, to. I think I got with you. I think so, eh? Yeah. Because yeah. I took you to get your very, very first one. You did all that time ago. In Paisley. 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 Home of Gerard Butler. <laughs> Is uh, that's, Paisley? that's where Jerry Butler's <laughs> from, yeah, right? It's funny if people don't know that. I know. Anyway, right, well, God, we've gotten into really weird territory now. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's the thing. It's just, a, it's like an older tradition that, that we're just carrying on. Exactly. I don't understand if people can't see it that way. Me see, either. the one I don't like is see when people like want to give you their opinion, you know, they're like, it was not a taxi driver that said to you, oh. like, I wouldn't hire you. And you're like, well, it's just as well you're driving the taxi and you're not sitting across the desk trying to hire me for a job then. I felt like going, mate, you're a taxi driver. But what's that I, got I, to I do? Don't, I don't really don't need or value your opinion on what I look like. Well, exactly. Well, that's like, and I was just but like, it's like anything whoa. else. It's like me walking up to a doctor and giving him my opinion. Yeah, about how he should mean do. Fuck all. <laughs> it doesn't mean fuck all. He doesn't all. know because I'm not well, doing that. Sorry, work. you you don't know because <laughs> I'm not doing that work. Because thankfully you're not allowed to practice medicine anymore. Not anymore. After, after what last you, time, what you did to those <laughs> poor, poor people. I'm just kidding. He didn't do anything. <sighs> no, uh, Nothing but yeah, was ever proven. Dan doesn't have a license to practice medicine. So anyway, carry on. <laughs> um, I just want to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> yes, it's clear. Do you know actually we're talking about East Germany? Do you know what the are we back? Are we back to that? Do you know what they described the Berlin Wall as? What? An anti-fascist protective wall. <laughs> ah, yes. Quick, get behind this anti-fascist Quick. protective wall, you'll be safe. Anti-fa wall. <laughs> oh, oh dear. We're not bringing them into it. No, we're, we're not, we're not. <laughs> um, right, it's too it's silly. A, so that was, that was the non-libertarian portion of the podcast. That was weird. It's a variety show. Is that, is that, is that what this is? This is, this is like the royal variety show. Uh, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's talk. Let, let's change the subject. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go back to a subject. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we were talking about East Germany. Oh, wait. Can and I? One thing I don't think I mentioned earlier is um, another aspect to it. Now I talked about the guy writing his bandmate was like. An informant. Yeah. Yes. Well, in some cases, spouses even spied on each other. Um, yeah. I get Apparently, a high profile example of this was a peace activist called Vera Lengsfeld, whose husband. Knud Wollenberger, oh, sorry, yes. sorry to anyone in Germany. <laughs> um, basically, but um, yeah, her husband was a Stasi informer. So even you had couples feel like me informing on you. Yeah, I'm a GCHQ informant. Oh, so am I. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, oh, oh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I would never tell you. <laughs> no, but, no, but then that's the thing, though. So Stephen, like, people kind of jump down. You know, maybe a throat or whatever when yeah. you know i talk about any even some people might say oh that's just a little restriction you know yeah. but then all these little restrictions add up to massive restrictions yeah. you know that's why it's not even that's why we shouldn't give the government any power uh-huh. over like anything anything <laughs> we shouldn't i mean in my opinion it's you know, quite we odd how, really how in a society um i could see that it would seem that the people Maybe that are against it, that are rebelling, sort of anarchist types, would be seen as weird. Why won't they just do what you're supposed to do? Mm. They shouldn't have to. That's 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 well, exactly what not. it is. They shouldn't yeah. have to. I mean, if, if not I come out, anyone, if I come out and say, imagine I came out and said, a, you know, bleep the something, the Pope, or the, <laughs> I don't know, pick a high figurehead and say, bleep them. Bleep them or whatever. Yeah, we don't have you a bleep know. button. I don't have a bleep, see. so I'm having to say bleep. Yeah, so but I, um, if I said something derogatory against a a, a, a figurehead of the state, yeah. um, say you said you think that David Cameron's an arse. Yeah, which I do. That's me being polite about it. That is you being polite. Well, I'm, I'm go. I'm going to be. David polite Cameron about it. acts like a bit of a tit. I mean, he's <laughs> not. You know, it, yeah, I so, think he makes bad decisions. But anyway, um. Well, so what was your point? Imagine then? I said that, and yeah. then I got you know branded as uh, a terrorist against the state, 
um, yeah. got put away or something. Which, you know, the way they're going, I mean, it's you wouldn't be surprised scary. if that eventually happens. Well, you know, they're doing random stop and searches now in Glasgow you because of the this. holiday season. Yeah. And what are they looking for? Are they looking well, for drugs and yeah, stuff? Yeah, they're looking for people who are maybe out in the town um, who might have a bit of, like, I don't know, cocaine or speed or something, maybe ecstasy or something like that. Just, um, see if they're not hurting anyone, clubs. just leave them alone, man. I know. I mean, they're trying to crack down, obviously. That we've had a lot in the papers about young people dying of ecstasy deaths, which is heartbreak. It's horrible. You don't like to hear about that. But ever. then I think if these things but were, were if they decriminalised, were yeah. they, would be, they would be looked at a bit. You could test, you could do trials. Anyway. Well, exactly, yeah. And then can you imagine you uh, ran a company, man, and you sold some bad ecstasy that killed people? You right? would be... You, you yeah. would, for a start, you'd be accountable. Um, your company, for, for wouldn't, death, your company yeah. wouldn't last very long. You'd probably get lynched by everyone. But see, because it's black market... You don't know don't, where it comes from. There's and, no way of tracking it. It's That's the all thing. A drugs would be if drugs were decriminalised. There's no, there's no doubt that they would be safer. Absolutely. You know, we can have arguments again about who would take what and where and stuff like that. Fine, but yeah. there isn't any doubt that they would definitely be safer. They would be safer to people if they, they wouldn't were... be cut with crap. You'd be able yeah. to actually choose what you want. Yeah, exactly. I know. It's sad, <sighs> and we've we've talked about it until we're blue in the face on this show. About and it's pro- not that we just want to do loads of drugs. We don't no. do drugs, right? It's, no, we don't. But we don't see why they should be illegal if they're not harming anyone. I don't see exactly. why someone that has some, you know, some say he's got some weed in his pocket. You yeah. know, the thing fucking grows in the ground. You know, and there's another point, right? Apparently, in the grounds of Buckingham Palace, they found <laughs> magic mushrooms. So does the Queen now get done with possession? I hope so. <laughs> Is that a thing? Is that? They found the secret stash. Now they're oh. st- they knew they were there. <laughs> the Queen's Mushrooms. The Queen's... The Queen's <laughs> That's the name of my book. That's the name of the my Queen's album. Magic mushrooms. The Queen's Magic Mushrooms. <laughs> That's bizarre. It could be the name of the episode. It could be the name... Yeah, the Queen's Magic Mushrooms. <laughs> anyway, um, so kind of spinning it round again, uh, jumping to another subject, we've been getting um, some really nice emails and stuff from people, so thank you very much. Thank you. Um, to recent do- donators, uh, thank you so much. We're we still building. That. Well, we're and still building our studio. We're working on get, uh, getting enough money to get a desktop PC um, because we have to run like Audacity, which is um, free open source software for editing the show and we have to run sometimes Skype for interviews which we've got some great ones coming up and then we need reference and stuff yeah so, so a there's a lot of screens there's a lot of screens around us um, but our laptops are not in the best nick so that's what we're we're aiming to to get so yeah if you've got anything I mean we we never actually we never make pitches for donations but no. we could make a small one you know even if you've got like some bitcoin or like a dollar a euro a, a pound whatever man. it's always cool yeah just throw us something we we appreciate it we'll yeah. kick in um, we've been uh, there enjoying is, there's no lower limit <laughs> stop trying to sell it man okay <laughs> I'm the worst salesman ever They're like you don't have to give me anything it's fine it's fine I'll just go, I'll just go, I'll just go and cry I'm somewhere. just gonna go I'm just leaving now <laughs> just gonna go and cry in the corner because you won't give like me a little Oh, bitch. <laughs> right. Yeah, we really, I, I, we, we don't do the thing very well for money. Um, nah. Some people are good at it, we're not. If you've got um, any spare, we yeah, appreciate it. If you have it, like always. a spare 20p or something, <laughs> throw it our way. Everything adds up. Anyway, um, so yeah, for, for loads and loads and loads more of libertarian podcast ratings and news, you can visit our website, which is all the W's. Screening at podcast.co.uk. Yes, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you and good night.